nice to just be able to be out here and just relax and look at the nature. I think it's kind of nice to work outside because you can get fresh air and you're not crammed in a little ca classroom yeah. all day. Schoolyard naturalization is the process of transforming common school ground landscape of turf and asphalt to an area of biological diversity using native plants. It's a good habitat for a lot of animals. I've um, seen mice. Once, once there were ducks around the Here. ice rink. Yeah, yeah there's, there's lots, lots of birds. Lots. This naturalized area then creates habitat for local wildlife and offers numerous environmental, social, and educational benefits for the school community. Schoolyard naturalization projects are really valuable for schools. Um, they teach really important life lessons throughout the planning process for the students. They are great places for hands-on cross-curricular links and teaching opportunities. And the process is also really important for the students from a social standpoint. They learn the importance of goal setting and also the rewards of, of seeing all of their hard work come to fruition. It extends learning beyond the classroom. And so when our students and teachers have an opportunity to learn in a different way, it, it just adds an additional depth to the learning program. Creating a successful naturalization project requires commitment and a great deal of organization. Schools can benefit from the process of naturalization if they know the steps and can envision how each one fits into the big picture. The relationship with us and Grounds for Change at the Calgary Zoo has been really important. They were there for us in the beginning stages when we were just a few teachers who had a vision and wanted to know how we could make that become a reality. We sat down with the naturalization coordinator and she shared with us some other schools who had gone through the process before, showed us examples of what the garden could look like, and gave us contacts who could help us along the way. Involving as many people as possible from the wider community, as well as the immediate school community in the planning and implementation of the project, will build ownership within the student body and instill a sense of environmental stewardship before the project is even planted. If a school is interested in schoolyard naturalization, the first thing they should do is spread the word. Get as many people on board as they possibly can. The parent council, the teachers, the administration, the caretakers, and the students all need to be involved in the process. So once all those people know what Schoolyard Naturalization is and what the project can possibly entail, um, you can get that momentum behind you and then you can move forward through the process. The first stage of the planning process is creating a vision for the project. Students, teachers, parents and community members should all have a say in what goes into the project. Our vision was to have a naturalization area that represented the regions of Alberta. We also decided we would like to include a vegetable garden for the children. I was one of the parents involved in the committee when we started Grounds for Change. I uh, had a son going through school. It gave him a chance to come and see nature close to home. And uh, he was in here with school learning. The learning process was good for him and uh, all of the kids in, in his class. The planning phase is important to us because we needed to have a clear sense of direction. The, the teachers, the students, uh, administration and parents all needed to understand the direction uh, that the program would go. The next stage of naturalization planning is project design. During this stage of the process, the current schoolyard is surveyed, the project site is selected and the final design is created. The community involvement is very important. We are in a residential area, we'd like to make sure that Everyone in this community feels like it's their garden, it's their space to, to play in, but also to take care of. There is a church right next door, so we're hoping that the church community can also use that space and feel that they're a part of it. We've been planning for a couple of years. We first met as a group and then as teachers and our principal, and then we brought it to parents, made sure we had parent involvement and then brought it to the students and got their input. We've hired an architect, we've got drafts drawn up and we're hoping to break ground in May. 
The implementation stage follows project design. During this part of planning, all the project needs are identified. The school gathers donations and applies for funds. The site is prepared for installation. I'm really enjoying the process. The highlight for me as the fundraising coordinator would have to have been the pancake breakfast that we held last June. It was kind of our kickoff to the entire naturalization project. The fact that we are possibly a month away from shovels in the ground, that is exciting to me. Uh, the, you know, that we have been building up to this for about a year and a half or so. The much anticipated planting day takes place and then the final stage of the naturalization process is project completion. Even though the new area is completed, the project should be celebrated, continually monitored and nurtured for sustainability. My favorite area of the naturalized place is um, the trees and like the bushes because they're really good for like hiding. The school inspired us, yeah. inspired me and everyone else to really like nature more. We love our school. Grounds for Change, the Calgary Zoo's Schoolyard Naturalization Program assists schools with the planning and stewardship of naturalization projects, working with schools during the planning process, as well as once projects are in the ground, to ensure they are cared for and sustainable. We have two main arms of our support. One is through the planning stages of a naturalization project, as well as the stewardship and maintenance of naturalization projects once they're in the ground. By working with Grounds for Change, we were able to create um, a common curriculum for all grades from kindergarten to grade six. And they worked you know, really closely with us and teachers and students by modeling um, really what this beautiful area could be used for. The our school would be much more boring. Different, not more boring. It wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't place. be less beautiful. The wild woods really tie up with all our studies of environment and everything. In the Calgary Board of Education, there are currently 75 schools that have square naturalization projects, and that number is going up all the time. A successful naturalization area is an area that continues to be used by the school and the students for their curriculum. So they use it in a hands-on way, it doesn't become forgotten about, and it really becomes ingrained in their culture. If you are interested in naturalization, planning a project, or curious about our programming, please visit our website for more information.